Hey guys, so this video has been in the works for quite some time and I'm not entirely sure why it's not particularly controversial or, or a difficult video to make, but today I'm going to be sharing with you the secret on how to get high quality audio for your videos on a budget. And this goes for just about any kind of video that you put up on YouTube, everything from a let's play to a, a vlog or a video like this, or even to an interview out in the field. Uh, and it's not a particularly complicated or even well kept secret, uh, it's this. It's an audio recorder, uh, and using audio recorders in general to record the sound for your video is actually quite a good idea. I know that a lot of uh, independent uh, filmmakers actually use what's called a double tracking, I think it's called, where you actually use a device to record audio separately to the video and then line it up in post. In fact, I've got a uh, video editing program called Magix, video Magix Movie Editor Pro 2014, I think it's called. It's on my, um, I got it through Steam, and it's actually pretty darn good. In fact, it's got a feature where if you just import all your audio and video clips, you can actually get it to automatically line up the video and the audio so that all the um, audio and video are synced automatically. So um, basically what makes this device so special? Well, I bought it, uh, well I bought it for about 40 British pounds. The latest model of this, which I think they call the Model 2, is available on Amazon for 70 pounds, but you can get it a lot cheaper if you're willing to, to um, settle for the first model and if you shop around eBay for a little bit. This is the first model, it's the only one I've ever known and I'm personally recommending it to you guys today. Um, it records sound, so basically you turn it on and you just press this nice round button in the center to actually start recording and then again to stop recording. Uh, you can record as a wave or an mp3 file, you can have an auto level adjuster so that it adjusts the volume of your audio uh, according to the you know what's being said into it or you can set it manually. Personally I generally prefer to set these things manually or um, sort of record them at a slightly lower than you'd expect um, input and then just uh, you know sort of adjust it necessarily in post. Also, what's great about these things, and what I've found is quite useful for them, is that say you're doing an interview uh, outside or, or, or away from a place where you have access to electronic gear and stuff like that, or you need to particularly travel light, for example. Uh, well, then what I do for interviews in those type of situations, or even any kind of recording, is that I'll take an audio recorder and I'll take a uh, camera such as this, quite a small one, and um, I will record the audio and use this effectively as a microphone. Hence, you can see the little windbreaker on the top here. And this works as great as a, as a wireless microphone effectively, um, which, uh, and it works great on a number of levels. First of all, you're actually recording the audio on the camera and you're also recording the audio as well on the microphone. So if one of your sources either gets some kind of interference or messes up or anything like that, then you've automatically got a backup by definition. So you never actually lose the audio completely, or at least the chances of losing the audio completely are practically nil. Hell, even if you lose the video, uh, you still at least got something from the interview if it's one of those type of interviews where you can only ever catch it once. Um, and also as well is that generally when making videos, it's not very well known, but audio is significantly more important than video. You can get away with actually quite a low resolution video or quite a poor quality, poorly lit video if the audio is good enough to carry it through. However, it doesn't matter how high your resolution is, it doesn't matter how crisp the video is, but if that audio is is not nice to listen to, then people are going to switch away quicker. So, yeah, this can be used as a portable microphone, um, and also as well, um, when I was uh, experimenting with the Blue Yeti, uh, which is in one of my previous videos I made about a, a couple of weeks ago, one of the big problems with the B Blue Yeti, and as I've found with a lot of other USB condenser microphones, is that they pick up a lot of interference from your computer. And also um, Dylan, who's uh, someone who watches the... In fact, I'll just leave a link to his channel down in the description. He does a lot of tech star videos as well. He mentioned that... Uh, the Blue Yeti as well picks up a lot of interference for him. In fact, it's quite a common problem with the device and condenser microphones, condenser USB microphones are actually quite um, problematic in and of their, their, themselves because they're not really designed to be USB. They're not really, they're, they're a bit too sensitive to be plugged in directly to the computer. Some people make them work and some people don't. However, this can also be used. Uh, uh, now, not all audio recorders can, but this one can. This can be used as a microphone. You just plug a micro USB to USB cable, one that actually comes with the device, although uh, if you want it to use it as a microphone, you may very well want to invest in a longer cable with the same uh, same parameters. And um, 
it'll actually plug and play, or at least it will on Windows 7. Uh, you've also got a 3.5mm uh, output jack, as well as a 3.5mm input jack, so you can use a lavalier microphone, one of the microphones that clip onto, say, the lapel of your jacket, if you wanted to have a more discreet style of mic, um, you know, discre discreet way to record people's audio out in the field. Um, and also the output as well, is that you could use a 3.5mm to 3.5mm jack to plug this directly into another audio device, or even your computer or something, if you wanted to use it as a microphone in it, and for some reason you didn't want to use plug and play. The real benefit about using the uh, USB plug and play for this is that it has no interference. It has no interference in the same way that condenser microphones often pick up interference from computers. And uh, usually the interference is picked up from the condensers. It's usually um, from the motherboard, and it's your make of motherboard, which is what determines the kind of interference that USB condenser microphone might pick up. Uh, now, my uh, motherboard was the most expensive available at the time when I bought it, or at least it was in the shop. So it's certainly not um, something that, that only happens on cheap motherboards. I think it's just a crapshoot when it comes to motherboards. But this actually has no interference whatsoever because it's almost like a self-contained unit that then relays the sound once recorded in the device to the computer. And you can use it for whatever you'd use any other kind of microphone for. Now the actual quality of the device itself, uh, well, I might as well give you a bit of a give you a bit of a demonstration. Let me just set the correct volume here, and all you have to do is uh, set the uh, just press the nice big round button in the center, so you always know where it is. That's kind of like a fringe uh, benefit of it. Okay, and this is actually starting to record it. So what you're hearing from me now is the actual quality of the Handycam. Now, of course, it's being particularly close to my face. It's picking up a, a sort of a clear interpretation of my voice. Um, so I, I, I will let you guys decide for yourselves as to whether or not this is a quality that will meet your expectations. I would personally call it prosumer level, so better than a consumer level audio recorder, but maybe not something you, you'd want to use professionally. I have used it professionally, actually, and gotten away with it, so um, it, it, it might be good in sort of certain circumstances as well. Uh, it's also particularly inexpensive, so if you wanted to use what effectively will say a wireless microphone uh, out in a in particularly harsh conditions where you thought that, that more expensive equipment might get damaged, it might be particularly useful there. Anyway, so I'm going to just turn the microphone off now so I can carry on with the, the shotgun mic. Um, yeah, so uh, depending on, on whether or not you can consider the quality to be high enough, I personally do actually. It's the same quality, uh, it's the same microphone I actually use to record let, let my Let's Plays on. It's just as simple as plugging it into the uh, computer and, and, and away you go. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a lot of like sort of low end cameras don't have the option to plug in external microphones um into them at all. Uh, usually manufacturers are basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to encourage you to buy a more expensive model by only having the more most ex the more expensive models have the ability to plug in external microphones and the microphones that come with most cameras really just aren't very good. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you uh, a short sound sample here of what it's like um, to record directly off the camera's uh, microphone itself. They tend to actually really skimp. Even the pretty nice cameras, the ones that cost about 500 quid or so, they can actually ha have built-in microphones with no option of adding an external microphone and still actually sound pretty damn bad, which is why this allows you to switch out your... Um, Micro uh, you know, it basically allows you to switch out which audio recorder you want to use with which uh, camera with having to worry not one second about compatibility because you do all that kind of stuff in post. So not only, not only am I endorsing double tracking as a method for actually recording audio, but also it does allow you to get away with using uh, less expensive cameras. For example, if you were to go out into the field um, and record something under particularly harsh conditions, you don't want to take the most expensive. You don't want to take a five, six hundred pound camera, even if it is insured. Get you know, it's it's not really worth the risk when you can just use something like this and maybe a lesser quality camera, uh, you know, uh, video camera, and uh, and be able to get what is effectively by and large good enough quality style stuff for at least online video. Um, without actually having to risk losing uh, a lot of money or risk having to cash in your camera back in on, on insurance, which is an absolute nightmare. And I really don't like insuring things that I can afford to lose anyway in general. So um, 
So anyway, yeah, just a few thoughts on the um, H1 Handy Recorder. I personally quite like this for its because it, it, pound for pound, it's actually very, very good, um, and, and 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 you get a lot of bang for your buck, effectively, and 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 a few other cliches of of, of similar tone. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you are on a budget, this is the the one to go for um, because. Uh, because it's it, it works well as a microphone it works well as effectively a wireless microphone or a, or a microphone that you can a portable microphone as well you can catch um stuff at a distance as well you can effectively use it as a shotgun microphone as well as a close-up microphone and you can like i said earlier use it to um to provide a recording um a recording input for lavalier mics as well so uh, that's about it from me today thank you very very much for watching but like i said i do uh, I did want to make this video because I kind of feel that uh, audio is something that's neglected by uh, a lot of people who do make videos and, and a lot of people don't often realize how important it is and I got to admit it's a bit of a sin that I commit from time to time if I want to make a quick video I will forego using any of this camera uh, audio equipment and just use the built-in uh, camera microphone and, and that's it's really not something that I it's really not something that I should be doing because it's just using bad quality where you don't uh, where I should know better effectively for those of you that are wondering it takes one double a battery as well which is actually quite nice it's one less um charger that you have to to worry about because it's it's the same uh, size of battery that you'll use in a an Xbox 3 uh, Xbox 360 controller or, or or many other devices your remote controller or anything like that so uh, it's, uh, it uses a standard battery as well, so that's that's pretty neat. And you can also power it off the USB. So um, I don't actually change the battery in this very often because a lot of the time it's just plugged into my computer and I use it as the regular run-of-the-mill mill microphone. It's better than a headset mic. It's much better quality than a headset mic. And um, and I've got better audio recorders that I actually use out in the field. But like I say, if you're on a budget, that's the one to go for. It also gets rid of a lot of interference. In fact, actually, uh, as a side note, it's particularly good for, say, lavalier mics, because the thing is with lavalier mics is that they range in price a lot. Uh, you can get a lavalier mic from about £2 or $2, $2 um, and they can range up to even like £100 or $100 for the really high-quality professional ones. And um, the problem is with lavalier mics that I found is that when you're um, putting a clip-on mic on someone, 99 times out of 100, that person who is using that lavalier mic doesn't know a thing about microphones. They don't know how to treat them. They don't know. Uh, sometimes they forget that they're wearing them and just sort of wander off. Lavalier microphones get damaged all the time, in my experience, and you really don't want to spend any more money on lavalier microphones than you have to. Uh, devices like these are really good at stopping uh, interference from getting into the recording of uh, even the cheapest of uh, microphones, including very cheap lavalier microphones. So you're, you can actually get away with using quite cheap lavalier microphones with devices like this. Uh, and you don't have to really worry about um, there being too much snapping and crackling in, in the interference as well. Um, whereas I've noticed if I plug in a lot of cheap microphones, for example, headset microphones uh, that are on 3.5 millimeter jacks, if they go directly into my computer, there's a lot of um, interference and electro electro electronic interference into them and uh, going into the um, into the recording. And that can be a real problem. And again, it's something to do with noise on the motherboard. But I think it's because it's just the make of my motherboard. There's not really a lot I can do about it. And motherboards are one of the more expensive and more difficult things to replace in a computer. So um, this is effectively what I use instead. And um, it's uh, to me, it's a better solution all round. So if you're wondering about how to do what is pretty much professional quality audio on a budget, the uh, yeah, the Handycam, uh, the, not the Handycam, the H1 Handy Recorder is my personal recommendation. If you can afford something a little more expensive, then at least sort of give it a try. Try and find some reviews to see if it's got the sound quality that you're looking for. Um, I've done a review on what I use. I use the Tascam DR07 Mark II, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's the one that's being used to record this video now, and I absolutely love it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think or what you use to record videos on your YouTube channel. And uh, that's about it for me today. Thank you very, very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.